when it comes to LLMs or large language models, the bigger the better. But also, when it comes to running those big models, your hardware needs to be bigger and better. But there's a certain point where it's not reasonable anymore. How do you know how much hardware you need in order to run those models that you want to run? So at this point, I went out looking for a tool that can calculate this stuff for me, right? And I found a bunch, but none of them seem to meet my requirements. Look, here's this one. It's got a cool feature where you can select a model and it's going to tell you how much memory you need. You can change some parameters here, but it's limited to these models that are pre-filled into this select box. There's this one by Ray Fernando. I follow him on Twitter. He makes some pretty interesting content on LLMs. Check him out. By the way, I will link all these down below so you can play with them yourself if you want. And I got another option for you, which you got to stick around for that one. Obviously, I'm going to build it and it's going to be the best option. So stick around. Now, Ray creates one that's kind of the opposite of what I want to do. He says he gives you options of what RAM you have available, and then you can see how many billion parameter model you could run, which is kind of the reverse of what I want to make. Still pretty useful. So check it out. There's this one here. This one is very hard to use. Let's say you want to do a 70 billion parameter model. I'm not even sure what to pick in here. Quant level uh, training method. I don't want to train, so I'm not sure why it's talking about that. I got this to work once. Find memory requirement. There's like things that you got to fill out that I'm not even sure how to do that. So it's kind of a difficult tool to use. I don't even know if it actually works or not, but this is pretty cool. This tool on the other side, you can enter how many tokens per second <laughs> and visualize that. What's going to look like? That's what it looks like to have 50 tokens per second. This is what it looks like to have 100 tokens per second. And, and if your GPU really sucks, then this is what it looks like to have two tokens per second. So at least that side of it is pretty interesting to play with, but it's not what I want. There's this one, which is just completely broken. And then there's this one, which actually works. And this is pretty nice, but it has way Way too many options and it's also limited to fp16 and fp32 but most of the time when we're doing local lms we're quantizing down to q8 or q4 if you don't know what i'm talking about uh, check out my other videos on the channel i talk more about quantization and so on uh, basically this tool is pretty awesome but it's limited there is a repository with a calculation code so you can fork it and extend it yourself if you want to but i wanted to make something really really simple so of course because i have a web development background i'm gonna make my own but i'm not gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm going to have ChatGPT do it because I just signed up for the pro plan. I'm paying 200 bucks a month. I might as well use it for one month and then cancel. I haven't decided yet. So if you want to do this yourself, you can do it. You just have to have a node environment set up and basically install the latest version of node and you're good to go. It comes with this tool called NPM and you can use NPM to create a new project. It's a React based application, web app, and it's going to use the Vite setup approach instead of uh, the old create React app. So this is how you do it. And I'm going to call it LLM inference calculator. And I'm going to pass in the React TypeScript template. So boom, and it's done. Now I go into the project and open this up in VS Code. This is a blank TypeScript template. So we need to open up the source file and here is our project. So to run this, I'm gonna open up the terminal, control backtick. First, we need to install all the NPM packages. So NPM install. This is going to create a node modules folder. Boom, there it is. And installs all the dependencies. Now to run this, I just go npm run dev. Boom. And it opens it up on localhost port 5173. There is our template. I have a React app running here now. Now I want this to be a calculator. But since I'm a programmer in the modern age and day, and I don't really have requirements, I'm just making a little app. I figured AI is the perfect thing to make this thing for me. And I want to see how far I can get with that. I already did this, by the way, in case you're wondering. I went to 01 and I gave it a prompt. I want to make a configurator, a calculator as a web app. So it should have a slider for the parameter size, quantization levels. And I also asked it to recommend other options that would be useful for this just to get a boilerplate going. I also kind of wanted to validate the calculations before writing all the code so I can get kind of like a temperature test to see if what it's giving me as an output, the formula that it's providing is going to be within reasonable ranges. Here's the summary of what matters most and how it affects VRAM that you need parameters of course the number of parameters in your model like 14 billion 32 billion 70 billion and so on that matters the most obviously quantization levels matters the most context length this is something we don't often talk about but context length matters a lot here's lm studio for example and up here the first question you get asked when you're loading a model is context length and usually i leave this at 4096 that's usually the default for a lot of them but this model supports up to 131,000 tokens but guess 
guess what? If you bring this slider even a little bit higher, it's going to significantly impact the amount of VRAM you need. There's no way to see this in LM Studio unless you go a little bit too far. And then it says setting a high value for context length can significantly impact memory usage. LM Studio doesn't tell you how much RAM you're going to need, how much VRAM. It just warns you a little bit that don't go too high on this one. Don't go crazy. You're going <laughs> to regret that. And yeah, as I'll show you in my final calculator, this impacts the results a lot. I was surprised. Batch size, that one doesn't matter so much because typically batch size only matters for training, but we don't really care about that. We're doing inference only here, which is using the LLM for generation. KV cache, whether that's on or off, it does affect VRAM quite a bit. So those are the inputs. And then the number of GPUs and so on, that's going to be the calculation, the output. I also want to make sure that we cover both discrete GPUs and things like like Apple Silicon and the new AMD AI 9 Max plus 395, whatever it's called. Those kinds of SOCs or system on chip that integrate memory so that memory is shared across the CPU and GPU. After we got a bunch of requirements down back and forth with the AI, it's good to get into that before doing any kind of coding. Just like in a real project, I asked it to create the app for me. It did start off with create React app, unfortunately. Not good. I mean, it's fine. You can still use it, but it's not preferred anymore. So then I forced it to use Vite, that's fine. And then it finally gave me the code. It gave me the JSX, but I asked it for TSX after that. <laughs> so then it switched to TSX. Nice thing about these things is you can just switch languages back and forth just like that. And switching between JavaScript and TypeScript is fairly easy. So here's our initial code. Copy that, plop that in, boom. And there it is. This thing actually just works right out of the box. The final one is obviously better and nicer looking, but this one is a good starting point and it shows you the calculations. So you can select the number of parameters, let's say 70 billion, quantization down to in four, context length. Look at that. Let's go down to 4096. Let's disable KV cache for now. And we need 69 gigabytes of VRAM. That's a lot. Now I just have a little switch for enable KV cache, but when I ran my tool by Bartowski, uh, we, we chat sometimes. He's a prolific quantizer of models on Hugging Face, got a lot of them out there. And he provides a lot of LM Studio community models as well. He mentioned to me that KV cache quantization level is also important. And indeed, when you take a look at LM Studio, for example, here is K cache quantization type and V cache quantization type. So you can select here between F16, which is the default, by the way, you can go down to Q8, increasing performance. By performance, I mean speed. Um, <laughs> you can do, go down to Q4. By the way, you can also do this if you're using Olama. Another tool I show here, quite often. So if you just run Olama, let's take a look at our models, Olama list, there's our models that I have in here. So if you do Olama run, Llama 3.21 billion, that's gonna take up a certain amount of RAM. And by default, KV cache is turned on with Olama and it's using FP16, floating point 16. So if we wanna change the quantization level of KV cache here for Olama, you can do that too. So right before you call Olama, you can specify Olama KV cache. This is an environmental variable that you can specify right on the command line here. And I can do Q8 instead of the default FP16. And now we're using a different quantization level for the KV cache. What is KV cache? It's a very important thing, obviously, uh, that affects your performance and the amount of RAM that you're going to need. So this is a key value cache, which is an optimization technique. And just like any other cache, it stores previously calculated key value pairs. So if something was already pre-calculated, it's going to store it. And then you don't need to recalculate those values every single time through each pass. And that speeds up your inference by a lot. Here's performance impact of KV cache. According to ChatGPT, the computation is O to the N squared quadratic and with KV cache it's linear obviously memory usage is going to go up quite a bit because we're storing those KV pairs and of course our hardware requirements are going to be significantly higher with KV cache so that's an important thing to add to our calculator I also kind of want it to look a little bit nicer so it's easier to use now before I make it all nice and pretty and actually calculate the other stuff let's go to github I'm going to just push this up to a new repository called LLM calc public create repository. In my code, I'm gonna go git init, create a new repo locally, git add everything, git commit message, first commit, boom. Then git remote add origin, let's copy that line, paste that in here so that we can link it up to our GitHub repository and then git push origin main, boom. <laughs> now our site is up on GitHub and I want to deploy this site so that everybody can use it. And I'm gonna use Savala for that because they make it so easy. 
And yeah, they sponsored this little section of this video, but I've also started using them not long ago for some of my own hosting here. So I'm gonna just click on add static site. You can do GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, select your GitHub repository. Now you need to get permissions for Kinsta, which is the company that runs uh, Savala to access your repository that you need. Give it permissions to all repositories, but I recommend only select repositories. And I'm gonna select LLM Calc for that, save it. Now, when I go back to Savala and refresh, LLM Calc is listed there. Automatic deployment on commit. It sounds good pick a branch, continue. Now it detects automatically that we've created a React app with Vite. So it intelligently pre-fills all this stuff for you. The build command, node version, the published directory, and then you can even include some environmental variables if you want to. Create site and boom. Now my site is actually hosted. It needs to clone it and then run the build command, but that doesn't take that long. And while it's happening, you can take a look at deployments, domains, so you can link up a custom domain for your tool or whatever site you have, the static site. You can have user management and this is going to be different site settings you can change things around here if i take a look at my site it says the first commit actually the build failed good little thing here to know because i never locally tested a production build which is the command that savala is running if you're curious about these they're in the package.json file right here so you can do a build command npm run build this is the command that you should always test locally before deploying it anywhere and it says that import react well that's the llm's fault i'm gonna just call it that it's not my fault I just copied and pasted it. So let's get rid of this import. It's not gonna hurt anything having it there, but it's cleaner without it. And now if I do npm run build, now everything works. And all I need to do is just now commit this fix react and commit and sync the changes. And guess what? Now Savala is automatically going to detect that you push to the repository and rebuild the site for you. As I was saying, static size is not the only thing that Savala offers. They do databases, S3 compatible storage services like this object storage, and they offer other applications that you can just set up. And they also support Node, Ruby, Python, Java, Scala, PHP, Go, and there's a whole list of other things that they can host. Application hosting, database hosting, and static site hosting. Really, really freaking simple to use. I, I don't think I've ever used anything this simple. And it just works. Status deployed, visit site, and boom. There's the calculator on the web. You can access it, it's public. I might change up the URL, I don't know. I'll post the actual URL of the final one down below. But this is it. Now all we need to do is just clean this up and make it look nicer and add that KV cache quantization level. So of course, back to our friend ChatGPT. I wanted to add KV cache quantization into the mix, but I wanna review the formulas first. Always a good idea to do that. So here's the current formula of how we calculate the VRAM size. And here's the new formula where and KV cache is active, putting it all together. But I just want the code. So let's go in here, paste that in, run the dev model, and here it is. So there is our enable KV cache, and there's our quantization levels. Look at that. It really affects, it really does make a big difference in the VRAM that's needed. Let's go up here, replace the styling, and look at that. That looks really nice. Why is it not centered though? Center the calculator horizontally. Copy and paste. Uh, nope actually got rid of all our styles center our calculator horizontally here is the current full css with centering copy all paste boom and uh, <laughs> yeah okay um that's not centered final app.css example let's copy that and replace that and uh, it wrote this whole app but it can't center the dibs <laughs> fine i thought that i could just to have the whole thing done for me, but apparently centering a div is the most difficult thing. And I think I know what the problem problem is. It's it's looking at the app.tsx and it doesn't understand the entire concept. It doesn't understand that there is other HTML outside of this little area. It should, it should kind of try and figure that out and give me some clues like, oh, by the way, if you're working with a React project, there is a root element that you need to address, which is an index.html right there. And if we set a width to 100%, percent here <laughs> sometimes still need the humans don't you quit that software engineering job we still need you folks beautiful play around with this i'll link to it down below let me know what you think it's gonna be open source too there's a repo if you have any additional things you want to add let me know Let's see 70 parameter model int 4 context length 4096 that's fine let's uh let's see oh wow that kv cache <laughs> let's bring that kv cache down to q4 ah there we go. And if I have an Apple Silicon machine, fits in unified memory. We're good to go. Thanks for watching. I bet you'd like this video next if you like this one. And I'll see you next time.